Hello my friends, family, esteemed colleagues. In our search for truth, today we are going to talk a little bit about um, telomeres. Uh, because we are hearing uh, more and more about telomeres, especially when it comes to um, aging process. But telomeres actually are very important in uh, functioning of the cells and functioning of the whole body as a unit. So what are we being told about telomeres? First, what is the telomere? Telomere is extension like a tail that uh, follows each end of chromosome. Now, what is chromosome? Well, I don't want to go very much into, into detail because um, I just try to keep away from chemistry and biochemistry altogether because it's created to confuse us. But basically, they are showing us that you have basically two chains. You have ribonucleic acid and you have on it um, nuclear, nuclear, nucleotides, whatever they call them, uh, which are little forms which create genes. Now, the point of it is that basically inside you have a paired genes and this is one ribonucleic acid and you have protrusion of two telomeres. Okay, they are just continuation of the chain that forms your genetic code and they stick out from the ribonucleic acid they're sticking out for procreation you need two of those so they basically they are being like crossed across and then you have connector in between and we call it now deoxyribonucleic acid this would be ribonucleic and two of them would form deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, everything here has name nucleos, like nucle nucleotides, nucleic acids, ribonucleic. Why? Because you encounter these forms inside of cellular nucleus. Now, cell, nucleus would be like something major center of the cell, something very important that cell could not live without, like our brain, for example, but it is not so. The nucleus of the cell contains chromosomes, but cell can live beautifully without this nucleus. So you can take a nucleus out of a cell, so no more chromosomes and the cell is going to continue in the same uh, medium where it was taken from. So if you have different, um, you, you take some cells that you take nucleus out and you have some which you don't and you return them to the same liquid they were living before, they continue living those without nucleus continue behaving same as the cell with nucleus. They, they work beautifully. But if you change a little bit um, the circumstance, so the environment in which the cell lives, let's say you add a little bit sugar or, or you make it more salty, what happens? All of a sudden, those cells without nucleus start dying and the cells with nucleus they continue surviving why is it so well because they are missing chromosomes now what does this chromosome do well all the genetic coding is in a chromosome so
what has been observed that these tails which are protruding out from the chromosome they have certain length and they are longer in young uh, people, young animals and um, as the animal gets older or we are actually focusing on people when people are older then the chromosomes start getting smaller shorter and shorter so we have decided that the reason for this is cellular proliferation every time when cell is being replaced by a new cell within organ or tissue it does it basically that it divides itself in half one half it tries to load with all the toxins that it has and the other half tries to keep as clean as possible then the toxic half disengages itself and actually becomes like a huge microsome what we call virus which is not virus it's garbage bag so now when we have proliferation of the cell the rejected part of the cell we say well the cell died a new cell oh it's part of the cell died it was disengaged because it contained most of the toxicity and then it was pushed out for macrophage to deal with it, to destroy it and get rid of it or to be ex and, and be expelled through blood cleansing. So now, since we are older, it means our cells have many times proliferated and because of this we say ah oh, this is why the telomeres got shorter because every time cell proliferates they encounter the tail shorter now the truth is completely different of course this is why i'm here what happened is that cell normally does not have any need of proliferation if the cell is kept always in clean environment the cell will never have to proliferate there is no particular time designed for cell where it should proliferate some cells proliferate faster some cells proliferate uh, they live longer before proliferation and this we can see in a body for example kidney cells or liver cells they proliferate they, they change themselves they discard part of themselves uh, basically every few months skin every three months or faster skin cells no? and cells in a bone they basically can take six years before they proliferate and every time when they proliferate then we say well it's a new cell so now we have a new body well it is not really a new cell it's the same cell only several times it was forced to cut itself in half and throw half out that was very toxic and try to keep less toxic part to survive and we know now that cells will proliferate when the voltage drops half of what it should be so if voltage should be 1.4 volts and if it drops 0 0.7 bingo here we go proliferation kicks in why because the voltage dropped because cell is so toxic so acidic that it cannot hold the voltage it just seeps out so cell will throw the garbage out as much as it can but sometimes when it is really very toxic 
even when it does that, the part that remained is still too toxic to hold the charge. And then if brain doesn't supply the energy for it to raise, uh, raise the voltage to satisfactory level, it continues proliferating and this is we have tumor growing. Now, what this tells us that cell does not proliferate because time has come for it to proliferate. It proliferates because the toxicity is there. So the more toxic we are, the more often our cells will proliferate. And depending which cell in the body is the one that is closest to the most toxic part of the body, which is the blood. And now the question rises, well, if the cell actually is not dying and new one being built, it's just a change, why is the telomere getting shorter every time the cells proliferate? Because telomere is not getting shorter when the cell proliferates. Telomere is getting shorter with toxicity of the environment. The more toxic the environment, the shorter is the telomere. Now, it, it just shortens itself up, but how does it do it? Well, it doesn't really shorten up. It curls up. So it doesn't physically get smaller. It just gets tighter. And because it's tighter, it appears to be smaller. This is why when you establish clean environment, all of a sudden, these telomeres start appearing larger. And now we have all this new artificial science of supplement industry saying, well, eat this and eat this and it, you will increase telomeres. Take this pill and you will increase telomeres. Baloney! Okay, every pill and every, almost all these supplements they pollute you more and they actually reduce. Obvious, one very obvious one is now the false uh, proclamation by bio don't trust or fake trust or whatever you want to call them because it's definitely not bio trust. When they promote their turmeric and saying, well, this extends your life, it makes, extends telomeres lie it's contrary it's pure lie and they are lying to sell their product i just cannot stand these guys okay and why because it's just too obvious for me because when i want to watch x22 report or even and we know they all promote this company you know so on one side they are telling you good things and truth and on the other side they are feeding you lies which I can't stand it bothers me so telomeres depend on the environment if you have a clean environment telomere extends now why is this important so let us forget about biochemistry let us let's forget everything we are told about uh, ribonucleic acids and about genes and about telomeres let's go quantum okay let's let's go for physics because this is where truth lies we know that from quantum perspective everything is just energy in frequencies different frequencies every thought is particular sound of orchestra, of frequencies. They are of electromagnetic character. So, every time something happens to you, every emotion that you create towards reaction to what has happened is electromagnetic sequence, electromagnetic wave of particular frequency that 
your brain creates as a response to its experience in the environment. Now every time we create some electromagnetic frequency, it leaves its imprint. Now these imprints are being documented and we call them genes. They are arch archived and the genetic archive of our experiences is basically our genetic code. And genetic code is huge. If you unravel it, it can go to the moon and back. It's really huge. Because the universe had gone through many, many experiences during this experiment of creating a life and, and a life form, creating the sacred geometry. And all this is documented in a genetic code, in what we call the junk genes. And since we have been through just about everything, whenever environment changes, now the frequency changes. So as the frequency changes, now it is going to affect our genetic code. And how does it affect? Because of telomeres. Telomeres normally should be sticking out as uh, floaters, long floaters. The more relaxed they are, the more sensitive they are to frequencies. And any little shift of frequency, they can catch and they start vibrating in particular way which then is being transferred and starts activating the resonance of a gene that resonates with it. So it is memory. It reaches for the memory. It resonates. Ah, oh, okay, I remember this. And this resonance, how the genes are going to resonate as a pair, gives now information to the cellular structure how to behave in this environment. Sometimes it takes longer time, sometimes shorter before proper resonance has been achieved. But this means that genes by themselves has, have nothing to do as uh, markers of programming from parents. What do I mean to say by it? It means that whatever disease they may have, is not actually what you are going to get or may not be the, the cause. Because it's always respond to the environment which is constant. It's not once happened and now these genes are programmed and now they are set for you and this is it. Your parents had a cancer, you're gonna have cancer. Doesn't work like that. Because the telomeres are constantly signaling picking up the frequencies of the environment, resonating, and then the resonance of it is being active, is activating the resonance of a gene that has the same frequency. Every gene resonates differently. So it's just point of resonance. And then brain basically deciphers these frequencies and then shows you in real life, real life, what we think it's a real life, our life experience, what is the most probable outcome of this vibration. So the longer telomere, the more extended it is, the, the wider it goes, the more frequency it is going to trap and it will more precisely transfer them to the genetic vibrational memory.
shorter they become, I mean they curl. So if environment is toxic, they curl. We know proteins curls in toxic environment. So does telomere. And tighter it gets, the less sensitive it is to the information of the environment. And then if it doesn't relate the proper frequency, it doesn't activate the resonance of a correct gene, the proper message is not given to the cell, the cell does not work correctly in this environment, in this resonance. So it is very important if we want to have not only long life, but healthy life, we need proper environment, healthy environment, to maintain the telomeres relaxed. Again, cleanse. And no medication is going to do this. You need clean environment. When experiment was done with um, one uh, cell from a chicken heart, just to see how long the cell can live. And we know chicken in the best circumstances, the most it can live is 12 years. Well, this, and, and, and it went through several proliferations during this time. And now we have estimated, oh, the most proliferation cells can have is 35. Says who? Now, do we need any proliferation? Well, this cell from a heart of a chicken was maintained in pristine environment. The liquid where it was living was cleansed continuously. And uh, this chicken uh, cell was living 25 years. No proliferation. 25 years. Now just remember, if every cell in your body can live 25 years before it proliferates once, and if we have 35 proliferation, or thir whatever they say, bingo, your life is going to be pretty long, no? But, the point is that the cell died after 25 years seen without proliferation. Now what has happened? Well, the assistant was a little careless and forgot to clean the liquid. So the cell died from pollution, not from age. Here again, nobody wanted to repeat this experiment because 25 years gone in vain because of one mistake. So we don't know how long cell can live. Personally, I think infinitely. It's just energy. So if you keep the proper resonance, it is going to resonate forever. Now, why do we age? we should not show the signs of aging. Minor, but basically all the signs of aging come from our interpretation of what is going on, our expectation. So when you see a, a somebody with a wrinkled skin, bent, hunched over, long eyebrows, you say, oh, that person is old. Well, I have clients coming that look like my father and they're younger than me. So, our appearance has nothing to do with age. Our appearance has to do with our toxicity. And if we can maintain ourselves clean, as Jesus said, keep your temple green, clean, and temple is the body of ours, then our life is going to be very long 
without any change of frequency, which means without any disease. So everything about our health, our longevity of our life, and overall well-being depends on how clean is our environment. Our cellular environment depends on our liquids, fluids in the body, the plasma, blood, lymph. But it is being influenced also from the electromagnetic frequencies that our body is emerged into because we are just an orchestra surrounded by different orchestras. So we are, we are not living separated from anything else. We are all living in the same energy of consciousness that we call Creator or God. It is around us and it is within us in a form of soul. We have to understand that no medication, no medicinal plant does any good for, to us actually. It can suppress symptoms, but that's all. Our health depends on the cleanliness of the environment and body knows how to clean itself. It just needs water and salt. And since we are brainwashed of fearing salt, we allow ourselves to become very toxic. And then, just in a case, we don't buy this salt business. Cabal made sure that the salt they offer is very toxic. Full of unnecessary iodine and full of shavings of uh, aluminum oxide, which is white powder, and other ingredients as a fillers, and pure sodium chloride to make it salty. Has no taste other than salinity. When you take the real salt, the sea salt, freshly harvested sea salt, because of amplitude, magnitude of these minerals it has inside. It has a flavor, tastes great. You put it on a meal, sprinkle it on your meat, it gets all new flavors and aromas. So, again, we are proving here that the medicine we are being told is a fake medicine. What we are studying in a school is a garbage science and I applaud every student of medicine to basically quit because you are not learning the truth medicine. You want to know how to help people with health? Just read my blog and get the protocol. I have already several people who use my protocol and distribute my books to their clients. It's simple. It is so simple that I say it's laughable. Just discard all this baloney about chemistry, biochemistry, and go to the base core, to pure physics, quantum physics. And we are here in vibration. And everything is explained completely in different manners so you can understand actually how things work. This genetic code that we are having is huge. It, would, it, it took billions years of our years to get through all these experiences to create the code. And we are still building it up with our experiences. Every hour experience is being recorded and is being positioned within the genetic code. It's a grail of life, universal life. Not just on this planet, universe. From the very beginning. 
So that's what we are dealing and that's what science is calling the junk. Junk information, junk gene. Without this junk, we cannot live. Because we need these informations so we can adapt to the changes that we are going through every time wind blows. Blows from different direction, ping off, everything has to shift. Every time you see fly, flying, pingo, everything has to shift because you adjust to the frequency that you are receiving. And the information is being drawn from archive of informations of past experiences that we are calling, calling genetic code. I hope this makes sense to you. To me, it makes way more sense than what I have been told in medical school. Thank you for listening. Till the next time. Love you all.